What will you tell your kids? That you voted for a felon and a criminal, supported a man found guilty by a citizen jury, went into the voting booth happy to pull the lever for the only former president in history to bear the mark of criminal shame. Will you tell them that breaking the law is how they should live their lives? That lying to their families about porn stars and hush money is how they should behave? Do you want your son to treat women like a man who was found to have committed sexual assault? Do you want your daughter to be a victim of a man like him? You going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the... Will you tell them that he was honest? That he was a good man? Very fine people on both sides. That he treated people the way you've taught them? I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Will you tell them you're proud of his cruelty? Happy with the ugly insults? I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. The attacks on women and the endless lies that the chaos, death, and danger he brought was worth it. We know it's hard to walk away and put country over party, but your kids are watching. You're not just voting for your future, you're voting for theirs. That is an ad of former President Trump. And what will you tell your kids? You know, when I first gave my life to the Lord, it was a tug of war with the devil trying to pull me back into the world. I mean, it was a tug of war, it was crazy. I got involved with some girl that I thought that I could transform because I didn't know any better. I thought that once you come to the Lord, everyone will be happy for you and everybody will go along because you are so excited to be on this new path. And I got involved with her and she was crazy. I took her to church and she would laugh at folks if anybody kind of shouted or praised a little too much for the Lord. And this girl was crazy. And she actually slapped me and put her hands on me. And I hadn't had no woman do any of that to me. I was young and I'm like, what is going on? You know, in my early twenties, mid twenties or so. And this woman, I was back to smoking marijuana and still acting a fool with her, but yet trying to convert her. And her brother was a big drug kingpin in the city. I hadn't met him yet. And he probably weighed a good 300 pounds from what I looked at the pictures and I heard about him in the streets that he was crazy and things. And one day he decided to just pop up at her apartment or so. I guess she, he had a key to come in. And she said, oh, my brother's here. And we were laying in the bed, shacking up. You know, I wasn't living there or fornicating for lack of a better word. And I'm laying there in the bed with her and... Here he comes down the hall into the bedroom and we're sitting there high and I'm looking and he said, oh, you're the church guy, huh? You're the guy she's been telling me about. The one that are you thinking or considering going into the ministry or something like that? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sitting under the sheets and I'm scared to death because this sucker was big. And he said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, uh, what do you mean? He said, what are you doing smoking that stuff? And why are you laying up there in the bed like that? If you're going to try to be a minister and, and, and be in church and stuff, won't you do it right? So in other words, he was telling me like, you know, what are you doing? Basically, why are you being uh, 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 up here this in sinful lifestyle? This is a guy, he wasn't even in church or anything. And he was chastising me for doing wrong and, uh, you know, basically being a bad witness and an example. I wanted to go under them sheets and as the old Southwest commercials, get away. I was humiliated, totally humiliated on that. And I never, that set the tone for my Christian walk because eventually I got away from this crazy girl because I realized like, oh my God, the what I do, my actions and the way I conduct myself can have a major effect on the lost and those outside on the outside that are looking. And man, was I ashamed and humiliated. And I said, I don't want to ever go do that again. And, and, and it was terrible. And the reason why I make this video for evangelicals 
It's time to reject Trump. It is time to reject him because he has masqueraded and utilized and used Christians to get to where he wants to go. He's not concerned about you or me or anybody else. I don't care. He, he, this guy is masquerading and being used and has caused more turmoil within the church realm that the body of Christ is broken. People have not uh, uh, decided have not to give their lives to the Lord. Church attendance is down. People have become so far out there on the fringes of conspiracies and everything else because of this guy. And it's time to reject it. And for those of you that follow me, I've got the notes. I've jotted some stuff down because I want to make it clear of that. I have, you know, why? Because some people will say, well, wait, wait, wait one minute, you know. And this is not a video to try to tell you how to vote or this, that, or that. But there's one thing, you know, I mean, it's, I guess in a way it would be. Because the only way to clean the mess up within this church is evangelicals has got to reject Trump. And then you know what it's what who it starts with? It starts with some of the people I made in the previous video talking about this, the leaders in the evangelical movement, the Tony Perkins, the Robert Jeffers, the uh, uh, Franklin Grahams, and, and uh, uh, what is this guy? Uh, I mean, all of these other pastors that um, the one, I can't think of them. Some of you know the one that claimed George Washington would be in the Bible uh, if if it was written today and, and you know, all of these past these right wing pastors that's been promoting this stuff for decades now, many of them, it starts with them. You know, you're going to have to reject them. Some of you, you're going to have to leave them alone. You're going to have to get out here and set yourself on a journey for yourself because these people are in it for themselves as well. And I have one here. Why? You know, because your kids are looking. I have on here, you know, the churches are lazy, I have. Because, you know, you're going to argue and say, well, Democratic platform or this or that, you know, they promote, they always, this is always the thing, abortion and uh, what is it? Abortion and uh, the gay stuff. And now it's all, you know, this so-called terrorist uh, uh, migration stuff. And they're claiming terrorists are coming over and all of this stuff. So these are the three things. Take that away. I, you know, they, they kind of neutralize in a way. But, you know, I've thought about this. You hear my argument out. I thought about this. You know, I thought because I said the churches are lazy. I said this before. Churches are lazy. How many churches do you know that have true pregnancy like ministries to speak to uh, women that, uh, that have gotten pregnant or something or they're battling with an issue such as that or churches that have ministries that deal with homosexuality and things like that. It is very, I mean, it is very few. Now, there's some nonprofit organizations and things out there, but it, it, you got to like search them out. I mean, they're, var, they're not a whole lot. And then depending on what city or wherever you're at, there may be nothing around. But the churches, everybody want to show up on a Sunday morning or wherever else and sit there and act like everything is just all, uh, you know, rosy with, within and demonize those that are lost. Because I have on here, this is the first thing I wrote on here. I said, evangelicals are lazy. And I have on here, they have forgot, totally have forgotten, pushed aside the great commission and they've come up with their new, their own commission. And you know what it is? It's Donald Trump. That's the commission. They want to replace what the scriptures say, oh, I'm going to start the camera over, but they want to replace what the scriptures say with, with Donald Trump. Forget about the way to conduct yourself and, and, uh, and spread the gospel and preach the gospel and everything. That's, you know, that's what they, what they want. They, they want Donald Trump to do the work for them. They want, so this way, they want laws to be put in place to try to force people to become a Christian instead of preaching the gospel, instead of being a witness for Christ. Because you know what? The people that have stood by and ignored just the behavior of the man that is using them and the behavior of the Robert Jeffers and all of these others 
that continue to lie and push the, these conspiracies and all types of craziness over the years. They stand by that and they have damaged their testimony. So just like I was wanting to get away and shrink underneath them sheets, <laughs> these, pe uh, these people, you know, I was aware that my testimony, I did not want to be a, a stumbling block to the loss and to those that, uh, you know, I, I didn't, you know, don't, I didn't want to shame Christ like that. But unfortunately, the church, many evangelicals have become so desperate within this world of because of the evil and the things that are going on, they've become so desperate that they are willing to compromise everything, everything in order to get their way. And if that means standing by a guy that has no bit, that's a felon, that is actually a felon and tried to conspire to overthrow the government because he lost to stand by that. And to continue to go about and bear false witness and do all of the things that's against scriptures. I was reading here, you know, I was looking at Psalms 15, for example, talking about integrity. There's 10 points of integrity within Psalms 15. You know, as far as, you know, you, 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 telling lies, little white lies, you know, tearing others down behind their back. Uh, how uh, 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 your, your character and making it harder for poor people to gain resources and all, I mean, all of this integrity. The church has no more integrity. It's gone. It's gone because they've decided to elevate a golden calf in the form of a politician to do the work for them. That is what has happened. And I said, the only way for this to get some type of resolution, evangelicals are going to have to reject Trump. That's the only way. You're going to have to reject them. Now, I know it's a tough thing for some. You're going to have to reject the man in this MAGA madness because we need to rid, rid society of many of these false self-proclaimed prophets and teachers that, that are pushing, that are utilizing him and pushing lies out there. We need to have the Lord Remove them out of the picture in society. Crash these ministries down, many of them. They need to be crashed and destroyed, and, and that's it. The Lord needs to remove a lot of these self people that have started these ministries and taken advantage of people, taking their money, taking everything, and leading them in different directions because ultimately they're this pro-Christian nationalist mindset, and they're pro-Trump in such a way that they don't want to be involved, you know, they want Trump and, uh, and politics and uh, and all of them to do the dirty work for them. That's the only, it need, we need a reset. And and the only reset's going to happen is Christians going to have to get off their tail and say, you know what, Robert Jeffers, you know what, Tony Perkins, we've listened to your lies for many years now. We stood by you and this or that. And how dare you dive and stick your nose into the political arena and get away from the preaching the gospel and have us go down rabbit holes and have us be all in total turmoil and turn people off from within the world. How dare that? And we reject you and we're no longer and unless you repent. And come and fall on your face before the Lord and come into the, your congregation and others in the society and set up and say, you know what? We were wrong. We, we are not to be getting all involved and crazy in this. Then, you know, you, you, you're going to have to reject them. You're going to have to reject them because as I was mentioned, you know, if you had these ministries in place, if the church was doing more, I've been in, say, for 30 years now or so. I, you know, over the years, I seen pregnant women come in, whether their marriage fell apart and they were pregnant or a young woman or something. And she's pregnant and they're broken because they come to church looking for answers. They're coming to church because they, they, they figured that there's some kind of comfort in the house of the Lord. I've seen it over and over. And I've seen where some churches over the years have ran many of these people off. But you know what? That one of the things. Whether it is somebody battling with homosexuality or battling with pregnancy, 
I've seen where they come and they are transformed, that they can make a decision if they're being have the right information and treat it right and treat it properly. So for you to sit there and just assume that just because they're pregnant that they're going to run off and get some abortion or this or that, the church was doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, ultimately, just like being saved, you got to you gotta make the decision yourself between you and the Lord. You got to make the decision. I don't care, no pastor, no deacon, nobody can make you come to the Lord and serve the Lord. So I don't care about all your little laws and trying to force somebody to become a Christian. You can't do that. But somebody that's battling with a pregnancy, they're thinking about abortion, they're thinking of, they don't know what to do. They come across the right types of Christians and things like that. You can be the one to make a difference in their lives where they decide to keep that child. Or you decide and show people with respect and dignity that are battling with their sexual identity and you show them dignity and respect and you may begin to see some turnaround instead of demonizing them and calling them demons and this or that. But otherwise, as long as this nonsense is out here and you have elevated a person in the name of Donald Trump as a golden calf to change your life and society for some reason, then you are totally off course spiritually. And what happens is it leads to nutcases like this rotor dude that went about and killed Dr. Tiller. Had you made your mind up on the 24th when you sat in that church that you were going to kill Dr. Tiller? Yes. A week passed before you made another effort. Is that correct? That's correct. You waited till the following Sunday in church. Yes. Why did you wait? He wasn't there um, the previous Sunday. And um, again, the fact that he was un unaccessible any other way, I, I had no choice but to wait. Why did you kill him? The lives of those children were in imminent danger. If, if, if someone did not stop George Tiller, he was going to continue as he had done for 36 years prior to that time, if, if someone did not stop him, they were going to continue to die. The babies were going to continue to die. Um, my honest belief was that if he did, if he did not stop that at that time when I had the window of opportunity, they would have continued to die. Twenty-two hours later, he had appointments scheduled. That's what he did for a living. There was no. Un no belief to understand that he was going to change his mind and stop the next day. When did you first see Dr. Tiller on the 31st? I probably sat down for a minute or two. He had come in the main entrance, looked to his right and then to his left. And then he went back out of the main entrance into the foyer area. What did you do? I got up at that moment and followed him out and um, into the foyer area and... Uh, I, uh, I did what I thought was needed to be done to protect the children. I, I shot him. In a church. But this guy was one of these radical type people, religious people, that decided to kill him in the church. But he kills him in the foyer in the church because he feels like he needs to save the babies. See, th this is not how you do it. But this is what happens when you have society that demonize people. This is what happens. And this is what you get from a Mr. Trump. He has spent his whole life do demonizing folks and doing people wrong and this or that. And a lot of people don't realize that the judgment of God has been upon him. That's why he lost in 2020 because God was the one that set him down. And though many people don't want to accept it, it's the truth. He was set down by God because if God truly wanted him to be the president, no demon in hell would have been able to take it from him. So there's a so if you believe in all of the other conspiracies or this or that, that means you're giving more power to the devil. And then that means you need to get back in your scriptures and go and pray and, and repent and, and, and find out who our true Lord is. So, you know, this is on you. This is on you. Though it's got to be a cleanup. You think of me, the MAGA has to go. 
these Christians have now, if you're not a Christian, that's, that's a different thing. But for us Christians in the community, enough. The devil has utilized Christian nationalism through Donald Trump utilizing him to infiltrate the church and to destroy it from within and to destroy Christians' testimonies. Many of your testimonies out there, you're, you're so selfish. Your testimony has been damaged. You're so selfish and stuck on the ways of this world and this kingdom that you've totally forgotten about the Great Commission because you don't care. You're worried about, can I pay a, a little, uh, you know, the, the Trump has told me that this is going to happen and, and is it that and maybe I, I, I won't have to pay a little extra here or there because Trump says so. Trump's a known liar and we know that. And for some reason, you continue to go down this path and listen to these charlatans that are online taking advantage of people. Do not allow the devil to continue to use you like that. Stand up for what's right in your testimony. You can make the difference in society. Not You can make the difference because if you truly love the Lord, if you truly love him, if you're going, you're going to reject this man and say, you know what? I've had enough. We need the parties. If that's, you know, if it's down to the political stuff, we need the parties to get it together. But we're not going to allow our test the evangelicals to stand by this party, the, what you would call the Republican Party, that the Republican Party is no more. It's no more. It's gone. It's the MAGA Party. It's no more. The Republican Party left. You've seen what's happened to all the, mo the moderate Republicans and all. That. Look, you ain't even seen Mike, Pitt, Mike Pence. And he's a, a, a true conservative. You haven't seen him. They've ran him off. So that tells you right there. Don't let the devil continue to destroy you. Because on this channel, we call him out. And we take him head on. A punch the writer between the chops. Evangelism for God. Where we talk about issues the church run away from. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends. Take care. God bless.